Hello everyone and welcome to Grandstand Sports Data. In today's video, we're giving you the betting preview for the week five matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to go through the statistical matchup, the betting factors, and then some betting trends as well. So let's get right into it. So let's start with the statistical matchup. And as you can see, we have on in terms of the model, the model has Tampa Bay ranked at number four, while the Atlanta Falcons are coming in at number 13. So just missing out on that top 10. Starting with Tampa Bay's offense, as you can see, looking like top 10 offense all around, except for in two important categories. One would be chunk plays, which we call yards per play. And the other one would be points per game, which they tied for 11th. But as you can see, just going down the line, seventh in the NFL when it comes to scoring percentage, top 10 when it comes to protecting the football, and then they're top four when it comes to passer rating. So Baker actually having a pretty decent year so far. Uh, I will say that they only had kind of one dud in their schedule so far, and it's been the Denver game. And Baker kind of admitted on the podium in one of the post-game interviews that they weren't really up for the game, and they need to be up for every game, especially in the NFL. And I agree with him. When you take a Sunday off, you're usually going to get an L for that specific game moving on to the defense for Atlanta and I think Atlanta has kind of been I would call it trying to find themselves because this isn't this isn't what people projected them to be you especially you could see on defense middle of the road 15th in the NFL when it comes to points per game allowed they don't give up much chunk plays you can see the tie for six in the NFL but scoring percentage team score on half of their drives when they get the ball against Atlanta's defense that's not too good also another thing is their passing numbers. Their passing numbers are middle of the road. So it's an eh defense when it comes to, you know, going up against the pass. The passer rating uh, against and then also adjusted net yards per attempt against. Just middle of the road. So just very meh. Uh, I will say when you flip on the other side of the football, you would expect a little bit more from this unit as well. Uh, Kirk Cousins only having 23, uh, being ranked 23rd in the NFL when it comes to points per game. You would expect that they would have much more than 18.8 .8 points per game. Top 10 in terms of chunk plays. I'm sure that's because of the guys like Bijan and, you know, some of their better weapons. But as you can see, turnovers, 27th in the NFL, 22nd when it comes to passer rating, 20th in the NFL when it comes to adjusting net yards. They didn't give all this money to Kirk Cousins for them to have a 20th ranked offense in the NFL. This needs to get better, and I don't know if it's going to get better this week. I mean, it is a division opponent, so they do know each other, but let's see what they're going up against. They're going up against a top 10 rated defense when it comes to points per game allowed, number nine for the Buccaneers, and then they're about middle of the road when it comes to chunk plays and scoring percentage. But as you can see against the pass, very well against the pass, tied for fourth in the NFL when it comes to passer rating against, and then adjusted net yards, they're tied for seventh. little drop off from that passer rating, which means they don't get to the quarterback as much as they should. But as you can see, Tampa looks like the more explosive team. They look like the more efficient team. And they look like they play better in terms of the three units of play when it comes to offense, defense, and special teams when you see the field position, as Atlanta is dead last when it comes to that special teams unit. Now, how do the fundamental factors see this? Well, it looks like Tampa Bay all across the board here. You can see dogs on a low total. Tampa Bay, believe it or not, is the underdog in this football game, and the total is set 40, uh, below 45, which makes it a play for dogs on the low total. How well has that done this year? Well, in the 2024 season, it's up 11.56 units if you play it just on the money line. So that's just teams on the money line, underdogs on a low total. It doesn't do that well when it comes to placing it against the spread. So it looks right when it comes to the money line, but playing it against the spread, not too hot. You can see divisional dog. Well, they're the underdog in a divisional matchup. That's gone three and ten on the money line, so it hasn't panned out that well. But if you played it on the spread, you'd be up 0 0.37 units. Unders for a divisional game. <clears throat> I think the the sense here is that usually they play each other tough. Games become low scoring. Well, six and seven in terms of the spread, down 1.54 units. Then finally, our coaching model that we built early in the season has been having a rough go of it, to say the least. It's been down 7.66 units when it comes to money lines, and it's been down 14.34 units when it comes to the spread. But all across the board here, you can see Tampa has those fundamental factors or the edge in those specific fundamental factors. Now, let's move on to some betting trends. And we said we wanted to touch on this when the season started to get more of a sample size. You can see on the left side is going to be Tampa Bay. We have it underneath Tampa Bay. So this is them on the spread. So basically what, we, what you're seeing from this illustration is that in the beginning of the year, week zero, they obviously were zero. But if you bet on them for the spread, 
and they won, they went up 0.91 units because they won a spread bet. Then after week two, they won again and so on and so forth. Or not won again, but covered the spread. So this is basically how much they've made for you in that time. You could see in terms of the trend, you're going to see a blue trend line. This is the, how they, how well they're being, or they're moving average. They're average in the last two games when you see it in blue. If you see it in green, which is just starting out because it's going to be the four game moving average. And these are just recent performance indicators. If any of you guys are fans of the finance world and like to do technical analysis, this is very, very close to what you will be seeing here. Now you can see it on the other side with Atlanta. Basically what we're trying to figure out is where they are trending. Atlanta's trending down, but remember when you do fun, uh, technical analysis, if it's trending down, usually sooner or later it comes and hits its average. So it'll come and hit that blue line. How will you hit that blue line? Well, you do it by getting a win or covering the spread. In this case, if Atlanta is the cover the spread, they would be winning because they are the favorite in this football game. Whereas Tampa, if they get too high, they're obviously going to regress to their mean. So that's kind of the, the premise in what you're looking for in these betting trends. Now let's move on to the money lines. Now moving on to the money lines now. Money lines for Tampa, you can see they jumped up. They've won three games. They only lost one. Here's their one loss against Denver. So as you can see, it was riding high over that blue and kind of came back to earth or regressed to the mean, just like one of the last videos that we showed you in the Edge of the Grandstands Volume 4. Make sure to take a look at that. We'll leave a link in the description down below. Then once it got below the, below the blue line, what happens after that? They win and they come over that blue line. So usually a team that's trending up, when they'll hit the blue line, bounce back up, hit the blue line, bounce back up. You'll also start to see trends too once this green line. So remember, it's a four game moving average. So you won't see more data until they play games five, six, seven, and so on and so forth. Same thing over here with Atlanta. You can see them, they get over that blue line in terms of the money line, then they get hit back to earth. Then they come back over the blue line. So one of these teams actually has to come below the blue line while one's going to surge up even further. So it's an interesting game to look at when you're looking at trends. It looks like both teams are trending upward in terms of the money line. So just winning games outright. I think a better illustration would have been the past one when it comes to the trends. But right now, it looks like both teams trending upward. Now let's take a look at the betting lines in this football game. Tampa Bay would be the dog by one and a half. Like I'm on the money line, that'd be plus 105. So that'll make that last illustration jump up for Tampa if they were to get that win. Atlanta, on the other hand, is the favorite by minus one and a half. If you like them, not too much juice there, minus 125. If you like them outright, just like we said, total in the game is under 45. It's 43 and a half. Our prediction on our model, which was run 10,000 Monte Carlo simulations, it's 26 to 22. Tampa Bay actually getting the outright win with the spread averaging at about close to four points a game. Uh, Tampa would win 64% of those matchups where we had Atlanta win in the 36. So the model likes Tampa Bay on the spread. They like Tampa on the money line. And then they like the over in the football game. I would like to agree just by looking at all of the, you know, basically the summary of this video. I like Tampa on the money line. It's a pretty good number there. I mean, if you're going to take that one and a half, you might as well just take the money line. I like Tampa outright in this game as well. So I'm kind of rolling with the model on this one. As always, we'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you like this content and would like to see more, please subscribe. If you would like the YouTube algorithm to work its magic and distribute this content to as many people as possible, please hit that like button. Make sure to share with a friend. And finally, comment down below on your favorite matchup this week and whether you agree or disagree with the model in this particular matchup. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you in the next one.